Ultimatum is one of the most universally hated comics of all time. It is a story that takes the ultimate universe and flips it on its head. No character was safe and the consequences would not be undone like we so often see in main comic universes like Marvel's main 616 universe or DC's main continuity. It came out to widely negative reviews, but to be honest, I liked it for the most part. Just as some context, the Ultimate Marvel Universe was conceived with Brian Michael Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man and later was expanded in the Ultimates, who were basically the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, and many more. The goal was to modernize these characters and their origins for the 21st century. The big problem with the Ultimate Universe following its 8 years in existence was the resemblance it began to gain to the main Marvel Universe. Most core heroes and villains would be introduced, and though there were variations like Spider-Woman, the clone of Peter Parker, and the dramatically different direction they went with Gwen Stacy, it still felt a lot like the old universe we were used to, and it made the Ultimate Universe's novelty wear off. So Jeff Loeb and David Finch teamed up with the rest of the Ultimate Universe team and came up with Ultimatum. It is one of the darkest stories Marvel would ever publish. The plot follows the Ultimates, the X-Men, Spider-Man, and the Fantastic Four. After a series of disasters devastate the world, they must figure out who caused this tragedy and stop it. They quickly learn from Professor X that Magneto caused the disasters by shifting the Earth's poles. His goal was to kill all the humans in the world so that mutants could take their place as the rulers of Earth. From here on, there will be spoilers, so click away if you want to read this book. Through the story, we learn that Doctor Doom was involved by allegedly killing Magneto's children, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, causing him to cause the disasters that followed. Many heroes and villains were killed in this book, wiping the Ultimate Universe's state clean for future books. These heroes include Angel, Beast, Blob, Cannonball, Captain Britain, Cyclops, Cypher, Daredevil, Dazzler, Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, Emma Frost, Hank Pym, Juggernaut, Longshot, Magneto, Nightcrawler, Professor X, Psylocke, Thor, Wasp, Wolverine, and more. Obviously, these are some of the biggest names in the Marvel Universe. On top of that, deaths like the Wasp, who was eaten alive by the Blob, or Doctor Strange, who was constricted by Dormammu until his head blew off, were gruesome and turned off many readers. That said, for the most part, I liked this book. The Ultimate Universe needed this book to change the status quo enough to give Marvel a reason to continue to publish their books. On top of that, the end message is uplifting. New York and the world came together to get past this tragedy and live in this new world that they are now forced into. It also had a series of parallels to actual disasters, namely 9-11, and they do it to push the message, not just to push the cheap plot of coming together like we see in so many Marvel movies. Captain America comments on how one man, Magneto, is just like Hitler or Bin Laden, and is only doing this to compensate for something. Which, yes, is a cheap penis joke, but later in the book we see further parts of this message they are pushing. Most blatantly, perhaps, in Ultimate Requiem X-Men when Carol Danvers, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. in this universe, decided she was going to blame the events on the mutants rather than just Magneto, which would essentially lead to war against them. Similarly to how the Muslims were blamed for 9-11, when it was just Osama bin Laden and his group of terrorists, Al-Qaeda. It is an interesting commentary on what happened and sets up an interesting sediment for future Ultimate X-Men books and would make them more relatable to the modern age. When Stan Lee created the mutants in the original X-Men, it was a commentary on the mistreatment of blacks in America. When this book happened, it shifted, at least in the Ultimate Universe, to be a commentary on the Muslim population. I also appreciated how it portrayed our heroes. Even after losing friends and family members, through all the confusion they still came together. People like Spider-Man worked on the ground to help save people in the city, and the Ultimates, X-Men, and Fantastic Four came together to fight Magneto. It was cool seeing these characters do what they could to help the world even in the face of Apocalypse, and it is also cool to read the cast in their own supplementary reading material like Ultimatum Requiem and Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimately, I would highly recommend this book. It took some real chances and led to an ultimate universe that would resemble less what we have grown accustomed to in mainstream comics and more of an uncertain world ahead, which of course directly led to us getting some great heroes in the future such as Miles Morales, an expansion of Spider-Woman, and even Wolverine's son. 
However, Marvel ultimately destroyed the Ultimate Universe, so I guess any possibility of an interesting Marvel story died in 2015 with Secret Wars, ironically written by the man who started the whole Ultimate Universe. DC, I love Brian Michael Bendis, but between Secret Wars and Civil War 2, just don't give him any major event story. With that said, I would recommend this book. I like the writing, I think the art's really good, so check it out.